I'm going to be going over the intercostal strain exercise video. The first exercise or the first video I did for you guys was about kind of the assessment aspect of it and I've gotten a lot of feedback from it and a lot of you guys are, well now what do we do? You know, what are the exercises we can do now? So I'm going to go over a beginner intermediate and then an advanced exercise. Now again, this is going to be more on your tolerance of pain in that area. Um, this is week, I think 10 for me, I think week nine last week, all of the pain finally subsided. So you're looking at somewhere between two to four weeks at a really minor, you know, uh, flare up. But for me, it was a lot longer than that. So I was probably like a type two in that scenario. So let's go over these exercises. First things first, um, like I said in my first video, I did this actually when I was breathing, so it actually has a lot to do with your breathing, obviously, because your inter intercostal muscles are responsible for that uh, respiration aspect, but also your posture. And if you're having bad posture in any of your exercises, um, that could have been what led to your injury. So that's something to keep in mind and to look into. Um, I'll have some videos about posture coming out soon, so that should be a lot of help too. So. Exercise number one, again, this is the beginner exercise. This is probably something you should start with um, unless you want to start with a Graston technique um, or some myofascial release. And really, myofascial release, you don't have to get too crazy. You could even use your fingers and just start up and then kind of make some circular motions in that area that's tender and then breathe out again and kind of inflate and deflate, okay? But again, breathing is paramount and I can't stress that enough. So breathing up here through your lungs is not gonna be the breathing I'm talking about. I'm talking about deep diaphragmatic breathing, okay? So what does that look like? Let's just go on your back. Everybody has, can do this, you all have a floor. So that rib cage wants to flare up, so we really gotta push that guy down and keep that lower back flat, okay? And you can use your hand and make sure it's flat. That's, that's huge, okay? And then we're gonna breathe through our diaphragm. So what does that mean? One hand on your chest, make sure this guy doesn't move, and I want this to move down here. So breathe in through your nose. And again, I want you to breathe in a little longer than I am, but for exercise purposes, I'll show you this. And then I want you to breathe out. And really breathe down and out in your diaphragm. You're almost contracting your core, well you are contracting your core, and crunching, but you're not coming up. So getting really tight. You should almost shake because your core is really tight. And I have a weak anterior core, so that's why I'm shaking. Um, so again, one hand here, one hand here. Fill up here, not up here. And exhale. And depending on your pain, you'll be able to exhale a little bigger. And then sooner or later, you can get much up into the chest and start with here. And then get up into this. And then you should really feel that pull, okay, right around that side. Again, maybe a right or left, depending on where you injured it in the first place. So that's exercise one. You do that three to five times in one sitting. You can do that three to four times a day. Really, you can't do it too much unless your pain really starts spiking up, okay? That's going to be on you to really watch that. Exercise two is going to be a little more advanced. And in my first video, I went over how the serratus interior might be part of this um, issue. So you really want to start activating that serratus anterior, especially if you did this in an overhead situation, you know, an overhead squat or whatever, if you're pressing overhead, anything like that. So exercise two, we're going to go and do a quadruped position like this and then all the way up here. And now again, we're going to make sure that back is nice and flat. Take a big breath in because now you're good at it. And then we're going to raise those knees up just slightly. And Pack that core and slowly exhale. And I'm okay if we do a little more rounding up top in this exercise, that's fine. That's gonna be okay because again, we're trying to get movement in those intercostals and really get them to work for us and get some blood flow to that area, okay? Now that's exercise two intermediate. If the first breathing exercise on your back gets a little easy, then you can go here, okay? And then third is gonna be a side plank, okay? now. With the side plank, be very careful with doing it off the knees because when people go into a side plank, for instance, like this, there's a lot of things you can mess up with this, okay? This is not a beginner exercise. The side plank is slightly complicated. So I say start with your knees. Again, this is more of a rehabilitation exercise. We're not trying to, you know, get your core ripped and get you the six pack you want, which is totally possible. <laughs> so just have the hand out here strong shoulder, and then we're just gonna push this hip in towards you. If you notice in that camera direction, I'm actually angled back. I wanna put that hip inside. I already feel a little tension here in my side of the core. 
and then we're just gonna bridge up a little bit, get that hip a little high, okay? And then, if you can do it, breathe through. Collapse that rib cage down. I don't wanna see any flaring like this, okay? Right there, and hold. Now, same thing, two to three times, several times a day, and then with this, you can hold it 10, 15, 20 seconds. I would say no more than 40 or you're probably doing it wrong, okay? And obviously, make sure you do both sides. Even if it's just a straight on the one side, you wanna balance it out, okay? So, that's exercise one, two, and three. If you have any questions, drop the comments below. And I hope you guys uh, just cruise through this uh, intercostal strain. It's not fun, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, last thing though, I wanna mention is how you're sleeping, because somebody uh, left that in the comments. They're saying when they wake up, they got it really sore. If you want to look at how you're sleeping, okay? If you're sleeping on that side, like in your bed like this, and this is where it hurts, and you're just compressing in that and getting tighter at night, right? Because we, we go to the fetal position when we sleep, which is natural, that's fine, but it's gonna get tight, right? So if you're sleeping on your side, that's probably not gonna be the best. So if you can, kind of rotate up a little bit, maybe get two more pillows up in your back here. But again, that's just gonna be a thing. If you gotta sleep, right? There's nothing you can do about it but try to find a better position for that feeling before you go to bed. And as you wake up, hopefully you'll start feeling better. But again, um, go see a doctor if it really gets bad because it could be worse. If it's a fracture, you're gonna know. Again, I'm not trying to diagnose anything, I'm not a doctor, but if it's a fracture, you're gonna know because it's gonna hurt like crazy. Um, this was just a really irritating, painful, annoying um, nuisance throughout the day, especially when I would breathe, you know, and so on and so forth. So, hope you guys have a great day. As always, live life, fit freaks. I'll see you soon.